Oh, yeah, there was another episode of Loki. <laughs> and, uh, well, I watched it. Um, and, you know, I, I thought if, if I was going to do another video, I'd revisit after the series was over and just say, well, this or that. And I still might. But uh, the thing about it is that it got me to thinking about a couple of things about uh, shows and films these days. And I think there's a bit of shell shock when it comes to uh, woke messaging and whatnot. And there's no doubt it's in there. Uh, there's all uh, the strong, powerful women, even though none of them really are, if you pay attention to this. <laughs> uh, the boss lady here is actually uh, quite heinous in this. And I was, I was taken aback by this. They actually... Uh, you know, and, and, and a white woman defeats her. I, oh, this is terrible visual. <laughs> you know, but, you know, they do this without thinking it through because all of it is done for the superficial. It's not really any kind of passionate thing. I mean, like the, the previous episode with the director said that the, all that mattered to her was this brief scene in which Loki admitted to being bisexual. Um, and that's all that mattered. And it goes to show because the episode uh, is, you know, there's a lot of special effects and stuff like that. And there's this back and forth between the two Lokis. And, of course, uh, to establish that she's the bestest ever and that sort of thing, and which is another uh, uh, point on that. Um, and, and then there was nothing to it. You know, it ends. They're trapped. And, uh, of course, the TVA rescues them in the next episode. But, um uh, that that's part of the problem of uh, where you, you all you cared about was a, a message of some sort, and that's it. And plot and character development and all that takes a back seat. So uh, there is that there. I've seen far worse. <laughs> and when it comes to being shell shocked by this type of thing, the instant you see a fragment of it, it might seem more magnified uh, than it really is. Because uh, a lot of it is just, like I said, it's superficial shielding for lackluster plots. And that's uh, more times than not, that is the problem. I know the overall era we're living in where terrible things result from this, uh, 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 you know, damaging uh, philosophy, if you can call it that, uh, that goes on in other avenues. But as it pertains to uh, the messages and entertainment, um, it's all very, very cheap and uh, not thought out at all, really. And uh, it gets in the way of basic storytelling. So another thing about this is, uh, you know, it was l laid into it that I realized it was only six episodes, <laughs> which I've often said that a lot of these shows, especially for the streaming platforms, would uh, benefit from uh, being shortened and that uh, you try to pursue 13 episodes because most of them, it's clear they don't have the material for it. So they stretch things out where you end up with a lot of conversations, very much like the CW shows where it's all these soap opera scenarios, but it's even worse than a soap opera because those shows, they go somewhere. <laughs> it's kind of stupid, but they go somewhere, whereas these is just repetitive talking about uh, issues of, amongst the characters, uh, emotional scenes that they've already done several times before to where it becomes ridiculous that they're doing it yet again. Uh, well, this show doesn't have enough episodes for that to, to, to creep up, but it is a uh, utilizing of scenes like that uh, to fill up time when they probably, this might have been a tighter, better story had they just made it a movie. Uh, even if it was just going to be on D plus and just well, it's a two hour special, you know, and that's that, uh, because it's, that's what it's looking like to me, especially this, since they put it to only six episodes. Uh, so that's, you know, one of the aspects of it that I've, I've noticed because there's certain trappings here that could have worked. Uh, even though they keep springing things on, like it's going to be this big surprise and none of it is, uh, Surprise, surprise, the timekeepers are not what they appear. <laughs> they're just puppets if they ever existed at all. Uh, they're revealed to be androids, and uh, we didn't get to see the man behind the curtain yet. And uh, that could be the reveal. You know, and in some ways it, it could work because, you know, I know the Marvel comics. I know about Kang the Conqueror and Immortus and Ramatut. Uh, spoiler, they're all the same guy, by the way. <laughs> And uh, it would fit in and be rather nice if that's who the real architect here is about this, and that's how they want to play it out. And uh, and if they're actually utilizing this to lay the groundwork for multiverse possibilities. They keep teasing it. The stupid Spider-Man movie teased it, but that was just a joke. WandaVision 
did tease it and its opening and, and the leads up to it and some of the interviews and whatnot. And apparently really was supposed to do that because Doctor Strange was going to be in it, but they suddenly realized he's a white man, so they had to get him out of there. And apparently, I, I, I fear that this is going to damage his own movie, which has multiverse in its title. So I, uh, But there was these opportunities to expand on that. And if they actually had a solid story overall of exploring multiverse possibilities and realities... Um, then that would have been really cool, but they they just didn't have it. And at this point, it's pretty obvious. Now, in the case of WandaVision, Wokeness took over and damaged that property. You know, it had a lot of cool things in it, and then it just fizzles. And you go, gee, I wonder why. Well, now we know. Uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier remains the worst because they made their superhero in Falcon uh, sympathize with a mass murderer, and that's really unforgivable. <laughs> it's really bad that they did that to him. Uh, so Loki has a good chance of probably becoming the best, even though it's three shows of crap. <laughs> Loki, and the saving grace here is this bizarre, uh, uh, creepy type type thing, but it's fitting with this character because, you know, they had these settings with him in the last episode, and now they pretty much all but confirmed it that there's this romance blossoming between the two Loki. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, well, it's only masturbation. <laughs> and it's this odd uh, thing that uh, Loki is coming. He he confronts his own conscience in here in a scene where yeah, they throw, he gets his balls kicked. You know, they do it for laughs. Uh, they have Sif show up. It's nice to see her again. Uh, and he has to live out this moment where he pulled a prank on her and cut her hair or some crap like that, and then she uh, kicks him in the balls over it. And he's, he's being you know, tormented by having to relive that over and over again. But in the course of it, he uh, confronts himself uh, in that, and oddly enough, he is confronting himself <laughs> with the other Loki, who is uh, Sylvie that she goes by, and all that sort of thing. But it is this, and when you think about it, he, he admits, I'm a narcissist, and all this sort of, so he meets a female version of himself and falls in love with her, uh, because it's him. <laughs> now, of course, after all the preaching and stuff about how wonderful it is that he's revealed to be uh, a bisexual, and yet the one that really gets to him, <laughs> now the surprise little stinger that they do after they seemingly killed off Loki uh, you find out that no, he's not dead. He's actually been transported to some other realm where he encounters more Loki. So there's a black Loki. There's a, what looks to be a little boy Loki. I'm guessing it's a boy. Uh, and a Loki who looks like the comic book Loki. So uh, maybe that's who that is. And, and, and an alligator Loki. So, <laughs> And who knows? There's probably some more Lokis. So maybe he got sent to a place where they send all the other variant, variant Lokis that they don't want to deal with. And that's what happens when you get pruned. Which would mean Owen Wilson, who was also pruned here, uh, perhaps still survived. So um, there's goofy things like that. If they could build on that, could possibly kind of save the show. It's a little late. Uh, and it's it just shows uh, lacking in material. Um, as far as the special effects and stuff. Ah, it's clearly on a green screen. And all, I don't care. It's good enough. So, uh, yes, this crazy, bizarre turn in it, which, again, is not all that surprising. I kind of wondered as soon as she appeared in the way he was, you know. And I, it, 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 it go, it, it's the only other way to go. Because <laughs> normally, oh, when the villain meets another version of stuff, they hate each other and they fight and you know, they cancel each other out or what have you. And um, either this is uh, Hiddleston's last round as Loki, and she becomes the new Loki, which, uh, okay, whatever, who cares? And she'll, she'll show up in Love and Thunder, maybe? I don't know. Or uh, she dies, that she's the more heroic one because she's better than him, you know? And uh, that would be, yes, wokeness into it and all that, uh, especially after they just sort of are constantly humiliating him and all this sort of thing. Um, and but, but then as a result of that example, he becomes the better Loki himself, you know? And, uh, but they, they, you know, Loki, Loki's redemption, I guess, you know, the idea <laughs> that he's going to be heroic and you now he's a villain. So it's possible that this could save it, uh, that they, they, they it, it had enough, uh, woke, uh, decorations around that no one noticed that they actually had a clever, <laughs> well, clever, I mean, not really, but a, a, a funny plot to it. <laughs> 
and I, I'm getting irritated with Marvel constantly relying on humor and whatnot. But this is just, it's not so much as it's funny. I laugh at it because it's just so weird. Um, but it, I can't argue with it in that this is uh, taking away from the character. Uh, yeah, I think Loki would do that. So there you are. Uh, there's other elements of it that we find out that uh, female Loki was uh, abducted by the TVA as a little girl. And, of course, yeah, a little girl was better than, than adult uh, a, a Loki, a male Loki, that she's able to escape very quickly from them. <laughs> and it's been on the run ever since. Um, still wearing the clothes she was wearing as a little girl. I don't buy that because then female Loki, adult female Loki, or Sylvie, if you will, uh, has a similar outfit as uh, Loki had. And uh, so I, I don't know if she got that from another variant or what, but anyway. So she's been doing this all that time since then. Uh, I, I, yeah, I'm not really buying that. That's a bit stupid. But that's the kind of laziness that happens when you do uh, bestest ever characters and stuff like that. But, you know, sometimes there, there might be <laughs> this stupid plot they put in that... Uh, I don't know, has a weird charm to it that kind of saves it. Because at this point, uh, I mean, yeah, I, it's not, I don't, if there's two episodes left, they could totally trash it and be really horrible and something in there. I don't know what. Um, or uh, it, it doesn't, and uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier remains the absolute worst of the batch. Uh, but uh, Loki could come out on top, but it wouldn't amount to a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> considering <laughs> what's happened with the other two series. So, uh, yeah, it would be cool if King the Conqueror turns out to be revealed in this, uh, and what one would hope that they would have a plan overall for the movies and whatnot when they finally get to the likes of Fantastic Four, because, I, as I recall, King the Conqueror is supposed to be a, a distant descendant of Doctor Doom, and uh, so something like that could come out of that. Uh, and that would be uh, really cool. But even if there was some at least outline for approaching multiverse and uh, alternate timelines and that sort of thing, it can easily be scrapped for something as stupid as, oh my God, Doctor Strange is white and male. Yeah, you know, so, it, you know, maybe something can slip through uh, this way. Because again, uh, yeah, they only... Uh, variant of Loki that he falls in love with is the female one. <laughs> so, oh, well, anyway, uh, so it, it, yeah, it got me to thinking about that, you know, the idea of shell shock magnifying things, reactions to it that is not as, as much as like CW shows like Batwoman or something like that. Um, and um, the possibility that you just really have to bury your stories under all this stuff. And uh, I think perhaps even though it's six episodes, <laughs> they didn't have enough material even for that. So it probably should have just been a movie. But, um, oh well, here we are. Thanks for watching and listening. Say, while you're still here, why not like and subscribe and share with your many friends. Yes. Also, check out my many stores <laughs> in the link description below. Yes, where you can get t-shirts hats, mugs, all those goodies with my artwork on them. Oh, yeah. And head over to IndiePlanet.com and pick up a copy of my comic book, Night Night. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can also catch me at my podcast, Mr. Nelson Show, on RadioMisfits.com. And you can also watch my videos on BitChute.com and now on Rumble.com. Oh, my goodness. So many places to watch me and my stuff oh yeah and if that's not enough for you well you can follow me on many social media platforms and say hi to your old pal mr nelson <laughs>